I was reading about a, a cross case before the Supreme Court the other day, and I thought this would be a good opportunity to go into some Establishment Clause jurisprudence. So we'll look at the case and the Establishment Clause next on the Constitution Study. There's one thing you have to know wherever you make your stand. Came from a long through line of everyday Americans. Hello there, everyday Americans. Paul Engel here once again with the Constitution Study, where we read and study the Constitution and teach the rising generation to be free. I'm glad you could join me. As always, head over to the website, constitutionstudy.com, for all information about the Constitution Study. I'm working on getting the book ready. It's hopefully going to go in for editing soon. So you can follow me there. You can also follow where I'll be speaking. And, uh, all, of course, all my articles and podcasts are there as well. I want to give out some special thank yous. I want to thank, uh, again, Mark and Carol Murphy and the band Rebel North for letting me use their uh, song, Everyday Americans, as bump music. I think that's what this is really all about. Everyday Americans. So you can uh, find their CD on uh, Amazon, iTunes, please, you know, Google Play. Find it, download it. I hope I know they'll appreciate that. Uh, also, uh, you can find me. I will be at uh, right now. I'm going to be scheduled June 8th to be in North Georgia. Uh, that's the next event I will be at. So if you're in that area, please stop by, say hello. I'd love to meet you in person, shake your hand, and talk to you. And today we're going to talk about a case called the American Legion versus American Humanist Association. You may have heard of this as the Brandenburg cross. See, there's this peace cross in, in uh, I'm sorry, Bl not Brandenburg, Bladensburg. <laughs> Brandenburg's a whole other place. The Bladensburg cross in Bladensburg, Maryland. You see, it's a memorial for uh, those who died from that area in World War One, And this, Amer this memorial apparently offended somebody at the American Humanist Association. And they sued. Big surprise. That's what we do nowadays. See, they said that the memorial, because it's in the shape of a cross and it's on public land, is a violation of the Establishment Clause. So after getting some differing opinions at the, the district and circuit court level, the American Legion petitioned the Supreme Court to determine the fact of, of the case. Is the monument, because it's in the shape of a cross, sufficient to make it unconstitutional? So let's take a look. There's, first of all, I read through the uh, arguments. Um, I read through both sides, and I found problems with both sides. No one here was really all that good, in my opinion. But the other thing I found interesting is none of them actually quoted the Establishment Clause. So I find it very interesting that one side saying this is a violation of the Establishment Clause, the other side saying it's not. Nobody actually quoted the Establishment Clause, which says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. Now, here's question number one we should be asking. How can this cross be a violation of the Establishment Clause? Congress did nothing to create the cross. Congress does nothing to support the cross. Families and the American Legion built this cross in 1925, as I said, as a memorial for their fallen in World War I. Now, in 1961, they turned it over to the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission, which is a state agency. Right? And now, through some development, the cross actually sits in the median of a state highway as things have grown up around it. But again, Congress did not pass a law. Congress didn't pass a law to have it built. Congress didn't pass a law to pay for its maintenance. See, for this to be an Establishment Clause violation, you have to think the words Congress shall make no law means any government agency doing anything anyone might think religious. So the idea this is an Establishment Clause is foolish on the face of it. But let's set aside the obvious fact that this cannot be a violation of the Federal Establishment Clause. It may be a violation of Maryland's freedom of religion. Every state in their constitution has uh, protections similar to those in the Bill of Rights. So there may be 
an, an establishment clause. I, I didn't look it up, um, but there may be one in Maryland. So let's let's just set aside this whole it can't be an establishment clause violation because Congress didn't do anything. Let's examine the, the arguments made for and against removal of this cross. Now, argument number one was a question. Should the cross be grandfathered in? Meaning, even though it is technically, they believe it's technically a violation of the Establishment Clause, should it be left because it's been there a long time? It's, it's, it's tradition. It's, it's, it was built before we really understood. Should it be allowed because it was a tradition since our nation's founding? to use crosses to memorialize war dead. Is, you know, be, is, is, should we leave it because the objective meaning of the, of the memorial is as a war memorial, not as religious proselytization? Meaning the court should overlook the obvious religious meaning because, well, it really is primarily a war memorial. The other questions that came up is, you know, under what situations... Can a symbol be allowed to stand? It's very interesting. How sectarian can the memorial be without offending the Constitution? What if the cross had an image of Jesus hanging on it? Would that be too religious? Um, what if there were other religious symbols? What if they had a crescent or a, a star of David? What if there was religious language on the memorial? What if they had a plaque? There is a plaque, has no religious wording on it. it it's about the, the war fallen. But what if they had religious language on it? How, how large could that text be before it offended the Establishment Clause? You know, what, what, about, what about Jewish or Muslim Americans who fought in World War I? I don't know about, I'm, I'm assuming somebody did. But would the use of a cross offend Jews and Muslims who fought in World War I? And, and would finding the cross to be a secular symbol offend Christians for whom the cross is a symbol of the crucifixion of their Lord? See, no one seems to notice in all of these discussions, in all the oral arguments, no one seemed to notice that it is the court that is establishing a religion. See, to establish a religion needs to enact or decree by authority and for permanence to ordain, to appoint, as to establish laws, regulations, institutions, rules, ordinances, etc. What the court is doing is establishing the rules by which public religious expression will be allowed. What symbols could be displayed in public? Did the symbols have to have a secular meaning? How visible could they be? The very court that claimed to be determining if a display was establishing religion was establishing the religion of humanism as the default faith for public expression. And they were doing it with the assumption of the authority of law. Even going to the point of they would use force to make sure their opinion was obeyed. You see, to my knowledge, nothing the state of Maryland was doing forced or coerced anyone to adopt a religious belief or to support any religious organization. The cross was not owned by a religious organization. It was now owned by the state. The state took it over. Maryland doesn't prevent others from putting up memorials with or without religious symbolism. Well, they might have a harder time nowadays with religious symbolism, but their laws don't. You see, the only people forcing the only other people to adopt a, a public religion is the court. I don't even blame the American Humanist Association. They're humanists. They would prefer that, the, that we all were humanists and that the state religion was humanist. But the court, the court is forcing people to adopt a public religion. You know, and by, in fact, by the federal government determining what religious expressions could be used in public, what displays would be allowed, they're actually violating the free exercise clause. Right? Yes, Congress shall make no law establish a religion 
or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. See, if you wish to exercise your religion by putting up a display, a memorial, or anything else, the federal government is prohibited from stopping you. Today, it seems, if a historic monument offends someone, either their religious sensibilities or just their sense of history, and a judge decides it should be removed, you're in trouble. See, if you want to express your religion by putting up a display and a judge orders it removed, you have to spend thousands, even millions of dollars to continue to exercise your rights. If a student wants to pray in school or, or a local government wants to open their sessions in prayer, even though the Supreme Court has said it's okay, you better hope some judge doesn't think otherwise. In short, the entire oral arguments in, the, in this case were which religious expressions would be established and which would be prohibited. Once again, we see the court stomping all over our rights while they claim to be protecting them. The, the courts claim a selective incorporation doctrine, sovereignty, over where to apply the Bill of Rights, yet completely ignore the language of the First Amendment. Remember that Congress shall make no law? They claim to be protecting us from establishing religion while they establish a religion right there in the courtroom. And they don't see it. And we don't see it. And that's the problem. You see, we've learned over the years, we've been taught, the Supreme Court gets to decide what the Constitution means, and even when they say it means something it expressly doesn't say, we're just supposed to accept it. We're supposed to be ruled by these high priests in black robes telling us, don't read the language. No, 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 we'll tell you what the language means. They are restricting our ability to express our religion publicly then patting themselves on the back for protecting us from ourselves. They strain out a gnat of their own opinion and completely miss the herd of camels they must swallow for the test they create to work. This case should never have gotten to any federal court. A federal judge should have looked at this and said, where is the law that Congress passed that is establishing religion? Period. End of study. Unless you can show me that Congress has passed a law, this is not a federal case. It may be a state case. Again, I'm not familiar with Maryland's Constitution. So I don't know. It may be a state case, but as sure as not a federal case. But we've made a federal case out of everything. In fact, the very fact that beginning with the lower federal courts all the way up to the Supreme Court, they took this case is a violation of our freedom of religion. The real question should be, did Maryland have the authority to take over this memorial? Not should it be taken down. If Maryland could not legally take over this memorial because it violated Maryland law, then Maryland should return it to the American Legion. Plain and simple. Return the memorial, return the land. But that's a Maryland problem. That is not a federal problem. We've got to get away from this idea that Washington is responsible for everything because everything they touch, they muck up. And this is a perfect example. If we aren't going to hold our elected officials to say, wait a second, Supreme Court, you're looking at this. Fine. Show me where Congress has made a law. If you can't show me where Congress has made a law, then you better turn this down. You, you actually grant the... Uh, um, the American Legion's petition to say this can't be an Establishment Clause violation because Congress hasn't done anything. Whether you think we should be expressing religious 
certain religious things in public, whether you think that public lands should be allowed to have religious symbols on them, unless Congress passes a law, it's not a violation of the Establishment Clause. It's not a violation of the First Amendment. And in fact, I think I've shown through some of this, even if that if we lay that aside, if the government is going to assume responsibility for private property, then they need to protect that property in the state that it was. If they fail to do that, it is their responsibility to return that property. The state of Maryland has taken over, by donation, the property from the American Legion. If they cannot, by their own laws, maintain that property, they should return it to the American Legion. Sadly, that was never brought up in the oral arguments. And that just goes to show, just because we hire these people, they aren't the smartest people in the world. They can't even read the stupid laws. How do I know that? Because not one of them asks, where is the Congre where's Congress? Where's the law that Congress is passing? You say it's been violated. See, probably most of them haven't even read the Constitution. They've learned constitutional law. And it's the mess, which is why it's so important that we read and study, that we know uh, what these things say. We know what the language of the Constitution is so that we can hold others accountable. We can hold others responsible because they work for us. And if our representatives won't work for us, it's time for us to fire them. It, it really is that simple. It may not be easy. But it is that simple. And it starts with knowing what the Constitution actually says and then holding them accountable when they just ignore it. So uh, I hope you'll read up more. I hope you'll follow the case. Um, I'll let you know when the opinion comes out because I'm sure I'm going to read through that and have some choice comments to make. But remember, just because someone puts a religious symbol up in public is not does not automatically make it a federal case. And even in the case of state establishment clauses, for the most part, just because you put up something and it, go, it ends up on state land doesn't mean you're establishing a religion. It only establishes a religion if the state pays for it or protects it, meaning protects it against other competition, I should say. See, what we see are humanists asking for the state to protect it from competing ideas. That's a problem. So again, I hope you found this interesting. I hope you'll head over to the website again, constitutionstudy.com. Find out more about uh, what we're doing here. Follow the case. Like I said, I'll, I'll talk about the opinion when it gets released in a couple months. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you'll, uh, I hope you'll support Rebel North and all the work that they're doing. If you have conferences you'd like me to come speak at or other events you'd like me to come speak at, again, head over to the website. You can do, a, you, there's a, uh, under events, there's a request a speaker tab and you can let me know. I am enjoying going out and speaking in front of people. I'm having a grand old time. I was up at Vanderbilt uh, a couple weeks ago. We had a wonderful time. Uh, Vanderbilt uh, University in Nashville, Tennessee. Let me know. Uh, this is becoming a very interesting time. I hope you'll see, you'll come back at the, uh, for the next episodes. Uh, I hope you'll let me know what you think. And I hope to see you again the next time on the Constitution Study. Have a great day. There's one thing you have to know wherever you make your stay. Came from a long through line of everyday Americans.
all were dangerous and all these thumbs up. Thank you.